The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hey, everybody, this is The Ash Holes. Each week, they smoke a different cigar, sometimes the same cigar, but mostly different, and they give their honest impression. They always assign an official Ash Holes rating to that cigar. So, pull up a chair, light up, relax, be an Ash Hole too. It's very rewarding. Hello and welcome. We are broadcasting live from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. This is the Ash Hole Podcast and we are the Ash Holes. Today, we'll be talking all things Lancero as we smoke the Tabernacle Lancero here in front of us. We've got some delightful news about how you can get your Girl Scout cookie fix in the middle of a pandemic and... We'll be going through the top five celebratory cigars for the very special game happening this weekend. What but game? There's a, there's what a game, game this weekend? The big game. Oh, yeah. It is this weekend, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, I thought great. the Patriots were already done. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I panicked there for a second. I was like, crap, did I get my calendar wrong? <laughs> we set you up for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys, let's talk about this cigar, Lanceros. Yes, a Lancero. It is a little controversial. This one is made by Tabernacle, mm-hmm. and based on what we've talked about before, we all generally like this one, uh, for the most part, I, I think. I do like I it. I do like this one. Uh, yeah, Foundation is, Cigars, yep. yeah. So the Tabernacle, and it's got the, the different band, so it's a... It's the it's, hybrid it's, seed. It's the hybrid seed, yes. Yes, so this is the Connecticut Havana seed wrapper. Uh, it has a Honduran and Nicaraguan filler, and then the binder is uh, San Andreas. So you got a lot going on with mm. uh, with this one. And there's three years of age on this already. Because um, nobody bought it? <laughs> yeah, it's three no. years in the factory and then yeah. probably an additional uh, one and a half at Two Guys Smoke Shop. Um, but this is a 7 by 40. Uh, so obviously the whole point so of Lance Arrows is it's long and narrow. 7 by 40, fake fake Lance Arrows. Yeah, size. they added a couple of ring gauge. It's true. And and then, then, is it, is it 38? And 37? Or? And a little short. I think 7 and a half by 38, 38. is the Cuban That's the Lance Arrow. Yeah. So, uh, but I appreciate that extra like two. It makes a, right? a big difference. Well, for the ring gauge, though, it can make a big difference in the blend that you can get mm-hmm. into the cigar. Yeah. And that's where I think a lot of people are down on the Lancero. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you can only get so many leaves exactly. in there. Yep. It's like you can work some transitions, but not as much not complexity. As yeah. No. All right. It's time to light our Lancero today. The official lighting today is brought to you by Perdomo, a company founded on quality, tradition, and excellence. Tradition. <laughs> Perdomo <laughs> cigars. Go. Gosh, you got me. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> With our little, actually, we so we have single jet Perdomo lighters, which so is perfect are for this. Perfect for Lanceros. Yep. We're gonna torch the heck out out of it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of controversy around Lanceros, right? Like depending it, on where you are, too. Yeah. It's it's like a love hate thing. I know people who only buy Lanceros, and I know people who will never buy a Lancero. And our selection kind of airs reflects over the that. Side. Yeah, <laughs> it reflects that. Uh, more on the side of the people that never buy it. I. When we talked about a Lancero episode, and part of the reason why we're doing this is because I think I had three or four people uh, email in that they wanted to see this, um, just a Lancero episode. Mm. I had a hard time picking one out because yeah. we didn't have many. Yeah, no. and there's some shops where there's a lot of Lancero, Lancero buyers, uh, and so it, it'll be more you know, yeah. prominent there. Here, eh, not so much. You know? Not so much, no. Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of three. I could come up with. The other one was the Aladino. Yep. Elegante. Mm-hmm. And the, the Adabe. The Adabe Spiritus. And we had just smoked Adabe recently, so I didn't want to I didn't want to go down that trail. And then, Yeah, and I probably would have chose this anyways because, yeah. you know, I like the Adabe and the Spiritus. Eh, I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not bad. It, it just like, you know, like any Lancero, it's like, it's not bad. It's just I prefer the other versions, the no, other I've sizes. Had, I have had bad Lanceros, that plug that don't smoke right. Um and so you haven't smoked them enough to get a plugged one. <laughs> so yeah, that's why. I've had a couple. Um, <laughs> and, a and sometimes draw, it's just yeah. like we don't even have it. Sometimes it's just one that someone will share with me. Right. Um, and I kind of looked into that because I, I had like two or three in a row that were kind of plugged. And because you don't really have much room for error the, yes, <laughs> in yeah. this, yeah, it's well, a lot easier Bentley to do that. Leaf or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, a little twist in the bunching, and you're all done. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the Lancero is not 
one of the oldest Cuban sizes, I believe. It was introduced as a Cohiba size in hmm. the 60s. Really? Yeah, so in the Cuban lingo, it's an Elegito number one. Oh, so it was, it was geared towards women. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think shortly after Davidoff made one, but that would have been the Cuban Davidoff in the 60s. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. I was going to say, there's not a... There's not a Davidoff Lancero down there, but <laughs> yes. I get that. They were, they <laughs> Way were before Cuban back in the day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and so the the lack of ability to fit more in, the, the, the more prone to mistakes is mm -hmm. part of the reason they tend to be more expensive because mm -hmm. you got to have the really skilled rollers, kind of like with the Torpedo. You know, things can go wrong, right. so you got to have your best people on it. So right. that's another kind of yeah. not, not against... Lanteros. In, in another against, you really have to pay more attention to it. They have a tendency to go out. Yep. Yeah. There's not enough fuel there to keep it going. And yep. if you if you smoke it too fast, it burns too hot, in my yeah. opinion. You Easily. really have oh, to. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah. you got to be paying attention. Yeah. Like, I, I'll probably have, I know myself, like, I'll get talking and I won't puff on it and I'll have to relight this at least three times but throughout the show. It, it is a size favored by... The so-called cigar geeks. Yep. Yes. That's true. But which makes me think that part of it is just so they can stand out. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. there's, I'm sure there's going to be people that actually like it, but there's going to be some that just like the but, attention. You know, <laughs> how many people are Lancero smokers primarily? It's exactly. usually okay. Let's change it up a little, and yeah. we'll have a Lancero. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I think for a change of pace, if you if you can sit down and really take the time to smoke a Lancero and pay attention to. The speed you're smoking, you know, you're not rushed. This is not something you want to smoke if you've got like a half hour. You're like, no. oh, it's thin. We're fine. No, because then it's going to burn hot. It's going to taste yeah. like a campfire in your mouth. It's and just nasty. They are very thin, so it probably makes people look fatter when they smoke them, Ooh, right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. How do I? I don't, how do I actually don't you look you, you look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Ed. So do you. Thank you. <laughs> Stop flirting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben. You know, I think what people like about a Lancero is some will say it, you really get more of the wrapper flavor from it because Which true. there's I just mean, it is percentage wise. Yeah. yeah. So the the wrapper, I I should correct myself from earlier. The the wrapper leaf is what's aged three years mm. before okay, this yeah. particular cigar is rolled, and part of the reason why that happens is you have to have a higher grade wrapper for something like a Lancero because that's really at the forefront, right? You're going to mm -hmm. taste that uh, a lot stronger than anything else within that cigar. And so it's important to use something. And this is the Hi Habano hybrid wrapper, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's got that kind of a reddish tint to it, yeah. too, which is yeah. nice. It's not the most attractive looking thing, yeah. but But I it's mean, different. You know, like it, it is, is different. noticeable that it's not your typical Maduro. Mm -hmm. or whatever, correct. Right? I could be misremembering, but I think this one is also one that they stock cut. Hmm. So they, they cut the whole stock off and then leave the leaves on the stock for a little bit longer before they hmm. pluck them off. Hmm. They kind of take in that last bit of nutrients or something. I was going to say, is that what it is? It's the yeah. last nutrient grab? Interesting. I did not know that. Jeez. Look like a nerd up here. <laughs> <laughs> um. So part of the reason why we picked this is I think we've all smoked it. We like it. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the flavor so far, Aaron? Uh, it's got some, as I'm getting, I'm about a quarter inch in, and I'm get, picking up some sweetness, which has been buried so far. Mm -hmm. A lot of earthiness, which I'm sure is mo a lot from that uh, San Andreas. And also the Habano seed, I think, yeah. has some earthiness to it. Uh, yeah, it's got a little punch to it. Yep. And it is, for the ring gauge, amazingly complex mm -hmm. and i think mm -hmm. that's just because of the variety yep that they put in here and the san andreas has a distinctive mineral flavor of its own yeah. and nick Malolo is a pretty skilled blender right like yeah. he he does pay attention to all the different flavors right going on, so. for those for those who don't know uh nick Malolo uh is also the maker of what was our cigar of the year Mm -hmm. uh, for 2020, which is the Charter o Cabano. So this is right. different line. And yeah, they're both products of Foundation Cigar. Yeah. And they've, they're so, you know, you, you kind of mentioned how, um, and if, if you heard our interview with him a few weeks ago, he really wanted to bring back that excellent cigar mm -hmm. that's available to everybody, mm. you know, uh, price-wise. It's not going to close anybody out because it's $40 or something like that. And so 
uh, he, based on what he even told us, he kind of prides himself on that mindset mm -hmm. of yeah, making he's, something complex. Yeah. He's beautiful. really into the the experience of the cigar and the history of it too. Yeah, right? because he oh, loved yeah. to do throwback stuff. It seems. Yeah, I was that interview was crazy because I thought I knew a thing or two. And then I was yeah, listening. He, he I was like, "Holy cow! This feels like stuff. school again." I feel like I'm listening to <laughs> yeah. a Zoom lecture, but it was he's, like all new stuff that he, I hadn't heard. He's he can go really deep on mm -hmm. the history of cigars in Connecticut in yeah. particular. And this is a uh, the the um, Connecticut Havana seed. This is may actually from Connecticut. I know we mm -hmm. talked about mm. um, in that interview. There's 40 acres of, left of shade, correct? Of, of shade. shade. Yep. And it's harder to get. Anything out of Connecticut these days because of it's just the COVID. land. Yeah. While well, the land is more valuable as you know, developments. Yeah, <laughs> right now. Right, yeah. So that kind of is uh, an interesting note with this one. But um, I'm so far liking this. I've had this I think twice before. Mm -hmm. I'm liking it as much as the first few times. Um, I do think for the ring gauge, it is very complex. I haven't really gotten to much of a transition except I am getting a little bit of the sweetness on the back end mm -hmm. that you mentioned, Aaron. Um, I like the slight pepperiness you're getting off of this. Um, and I think so far it's, mine's burning well. Uh, I'm always scared to smoke these because I'm afraid I'm going <laughs> to screw it up a little bit. So, Ben, um, what are you thinking over there? Uh, so far, so good. You know, I, <clears throat> I've complained about some of the cigars that have a larger ring gauge just being kind of a little bit ridiculous. So this yeah, is a little be. more um, towards my style. And, mm -hmm. you know, on the retro hail, it's got a nice little bite to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, not quite eye-watering, but you notice. Yeah. yeah. So, and I really like that aspect of it. You smoke the uh, Aladino Corona a lot. Yeah. Right? So yep. this is right in your wheelhouse as far as uh, ring gauge. Yeah. Ring that's gauge a 42? Yeah, yeah, that's slightly good. bigger than this. Yeah. Slightly not too bigger. much. Yeah. 42, I want to say. Yeah, that's going to drive so. me crazy. That would yeah. be a real Corona, and I, mm -hmm. I think it is a 42. Is it? I, I should know this. This is my job. <laughs> <laughs> I should know this. You know, I you mean, some, know every some people cigar. go 46, which is a Corona Gorda, yep. and just call it a Corona anyway. Yeah, you know, it's or like, a it could practically be a Robusta. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. like too off from that, right? So um, I was talking to some of the people I work with about the fact that we're smoking this, and um, one person in particular, we're not going to name names, uh, said, that's awesome. But why don't people buy my freaking Lanceros? <laughs> so, because they're asked for I think for, I could put a name to that. <laughs> actually, you probably wouldn't be able to. I'm, I'm trying to do this as, as thinly veil, or as uh, veiled as possible. But um, that's actually one thing I've noticed is we'll have people request um, Lanceros specifically. And we'll just, it's just never something we end up getting in. And uh, after asking, it's something that I think, and I don't know if it's our shop in particular, it's kind of like a one hit wonder. Like, oh, yeah, I finally got it in. They'll yeah, buy one. Yeah, something different to yeah. try it, yeah. And then the box will sit there and get another yeah. two years of age. I mean, the <laughs> cigar's only getting better. Yeah, not but a lot of box purchases on it. Yeah, no. And um, I don't know. The other thing I thought about is humidor space. Yeah. It can be a little yeah. weird to fit in your humidor. It it's is, a little yeah. awkward to, to fit in there. Because um, of the length or? Yeah. Yeah. Partly, yeah. Partly, yeah. Depending on, like, it would fit in mine fine, but my I have a huge humidor. So, mm -hmm. and, I mean, Ed has a massive one, so... We don't count. Right. Some of the um, the portable humidors mm -hmm. would have trouble with something that's seven inches long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And even those like uh, kind of small sleeve um, oh, cases yeah. <laughs> that you'd like bring into a golf course or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be rattling around in there yeah. or too long. It'll yeah. crack. Yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. The, so You know, the other Lance Arrow we do have is Sokka's. Oh, no, no, leave, leave me the hell me the alone. alone. No, leave me the hell alone. <laughs> What's that? I can't I can't even think of that acronym. It's like Well, it's on the they come in a little -H -H. I know. I, I wasn't going to say I wasn't going to sit here and go through the yeah. the the sentence, but um I think it's got a hashtag too. Yeah, right? it does. It's hashtag yeah. Yes, that's right. Now leave me the hell alone. Yeah. N L, yeah. M T whatever. So, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um I, I I have not smoked that Lancero. Oh yeah. Um mm -hmm. But I think they were in one of the. We had an event with Saka this, oh, yep. this weekend, and they were in one of the, the pack. Packs. And some people were really pumped about that hmm. being in the pack. So it's definitely on. Have you smoked it? Uh, that yeah, one? I smoked it mm. uh, over the weekend. Yeah. Okay. Do you I, like that one? I've smoked it before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. It's 
I'll get them, you know, like any Lancero, occasionally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you obligated to say, now leave me the hell alone the second you light it up? Is that just like... Uh, the name I mean, is an attraction for me. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, it's very Ed. Ed that's very then Ed you can Ed just energy. claim it's the cigar that's making his say. You've, <laughs> you've heard of resting bitch face, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ed's got resting Ed face. Resting now, leave me the hell alone face. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's just although it's oddly just, enough, when I'm out in public, people seem to want to talk to me, which is just it's, it's well, c- it's because from a distance you look like a friendly older gentleman. You do uh, up yeah. close, you just see a crank. Yeah, and like, and you, the way you carry yourself is also just like very, uh, you know, you're kind of, you're just I mean, kind of like floating through. Whatever and happened in the days when use- you can judge a book by the cover and be left alone, you know? It's I like know. he's like, well, they look mean, but they're probably really. He sweet. looks like, like a dick, but let me get no, to his gooey yeah. inner shell. I don't want to judge. No, please, please judge. No, please <laughs> leave me alone. Please. Light up your lancero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> leave me that alone. <laughs> um, no, Ed's. Ed's special. We yeah. <laughs> special, special Ed, Ed that's yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about our lineup one more time. We put this on social media uh, last night, I believe. So we're talking all things Lancero today. And honestly, uh, if you have input, please send us an email. Uh, I'm curious yeah, to see. something special you want to see on yeah, the show. If you, you know. want to be on the show, uh, first name basis only, send us an email. We love reading that <laughs> stuff. I, I loved last week's email. Um we're smoking Bandolero next week. I'm really excited about mm. that one. I've smoked probably 10 of those since they dropped. Uh, we have the Sereno Maduro coming up and then Great closing out well, February yeah. with uh, Avo. Mm. So I think it's a really good lineup yeah, this month. Yeah, it's a good yeah. month. And if you want to smoke along with us, uh, all of that is available at twoguyscigars.com. All right. So Talk. why don't we take a break now? And when we come back, we'll do our top five and hear some delightful news, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Only Great Leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive mouth-watering flavors of the Corojo 99 and the Criollo 98 seeds, cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of the JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of the Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you will experience the unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa Leaf different than any other tobacco in the world. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganor Salif. Hello, cigar aficionados. This is Klaus Kellner from Davidoff Cigars. I invite you to taste the elements with Davidoff Escurio, Nicaragua, and Yamasa. From water comes originality. Savor the sweet and spicy originality of the Davidoff Escurial tobaccos formed by the rains of Bahia, Brazil. From fire comes intensity. Enjoy the bittersweet aromas and fiery intensity of the Davidoff Nicaragua. From earth comes complexity. Taste the earthy flavors and complex spices that are unique to the red soil of the Yamasa region in Dominican Republic. Only Davidoff Master Blenders could take the power of nature and blend it into a range of exceptional cigars each element making each cigar a unique experience. Water, fire, earth, flavors that have risen from the very world itself. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Davidoff Cigars, cigar adventures to a wider world. Looking for a mild cigar? Don Rafael is just that, solidly constructed, and it offers up a mellow experience that holds a ton of universal appeal. This is just one of the reasons for Don Rafael's enormous success. Looking to get your friend into smoking cigars? The Don Rafael cigar is absolutely the right choice. The brand originally set out to outdo the competition, but for the price, there is no competition. You can't beat Don Rafael, it outsells them all. Don Rafael can be enjoyed any time of the day, all day, and cigar after cigar. The Don Rafael has a smooth, mellow aroma that will not linger. Draped in a seamless golden brown Connecticut wrapper, Dominican long fillers, and a Dominican binder complete the blend. Expect earthy notes with some hints of cedar throughout. And as far as quality everyday blends go, for a mild cigar smoker, it doesn't get more satisfying than this. Remember this, Don. Don Rafael. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating. is a complex Nicaraguan puro 
carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General warning tobacco use increases the risk of infertility, stillbirth, and low birth weight. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head, and value, value, value. There are a Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian, and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five year old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well aged long filler leaves. So, what you do expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take a journey. And we're back live in the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire, and we're smoking the Tabernacle Lancero. If you don't already follow us on social media, find us on Facebook as The Ash Holes, on Twitter at The Ash Holes, and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. Uh, if you're new and just listening, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Do what you got to do. YouTube is going to be implementing age verification. They actually already have on some pages. Uh, so get yourself grandfathered in. Subscribe to us. Or come make our Tuesday and see us live. In we the, love uh, that. We yeah. have a guest today. He's we do. very famous. Just surprising with the famous. amount of snow we got. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, I, I, th- I, I thought a, uh, yeah. one of my regulars might, might show up here, but... We didn't know what was going on with the snowstorm, so rightfully so, it scared some people. You got what a foot and a half out there? Casual, yeah, yeah, yeah. casual foot and a half, like that. Yeah, yeah where I live, I, we got a straight foot. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like Ed got seventeen inches, and it was like and what? Th- this is the thing about New England. It's like the reports yeah. were like we could either get four or five inches or two, two feet, feet. Yeah. and it was it was literally that spread, and it was changing every hour, and then we got buried. Yeah, Central Mass <laughs> is in the zone where you could get two inches yeah. or twelve feet. Central Mass yeah. is I don't know. even worse. Yeah. And the, like yeah, the border right. is not that it's like in this zone twelve to eighteen and this zone four to six. And mm-hmm. I was like, that is a huge gap. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that thing shifts by a mile, and that's me it's buried. Crazy. And that, yeah, it. So that was interesting this morning. This was, I, I would say, my first real New England storm. Yeah, storm. Hmm. Uh, getting to work back roads initially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was my that. mistake. So I yeah. got off those real fast. Well, I couldn't get up a hill, so I probably looked stupid. I'm sure these people. We're watching Everybody else is like, window, we're not going up that hill. Like, huh, this Ohio <laughs> person. But there's a hill on my way to work, and I came around the corner to go up the hill, and I realized my car kind of stopped, and I started going back down the hill. Yeah, that's, like, that's a horrible feeling. So then I tried Whoa. again, and there's nobody around me, right? Because nobody's out. Cause yeah, nobody else is using that hill. And so <laughs> they learned their lesson. Or they're like they all know, waiting yeah. till I figure out what I'm doing. So I can't get up this hill. And I pull in, there's a left turn into like a, a little subdivision or whatever. So I pull in there, and I go down, and I turn around. And I looked as I'm like driving to the stop sign to make sure I'm not like going to get hit by anybody. And I, could, I had plenty of clearance and I kind of blew right. Through. I did. I blew through the stop sign. I definitely broke a law. I mean, but I, that's something that does happen around here. I ha- like, like I had to have the momentum and can't I, stop, came up, stop. I came up the hill. I got up the hill and after I got up the hill, it was fine. But I was embarrassed for myself. Now, see, don't uh, get spoiled. That was a very friendly storm timing wise. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's worse when it's time to leave work. And yes. It's the, the middle of the worst. storm. When you can't see. Yeah. Yeah. That was all. That'd be terrible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I know it was snowing. Was it last, last Tuesday? Week? And Ben was late for an appointment because <laughs> I heard all about it. On that Wednesday. was bad. He wouldn't shut up, would he? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad, though. That was that was not a nice a little snow drop. So yeah, but anyway. now you know because I yes. know you know you and I live about ten minutes away from each other. We take the yeah. same route to and from work. Yeah. Now you know. Yep. Don't take that route. <laughs> highways. Yeah. Yes. Well, Stick so to the highways. I was, I was scared because like we're leaving work yesterday, and it was coming down for about three hours before we left, and there was like photos all over my Facebook of accidents on the yeah. highway, everywhere, yeah. semis, like cars, and I'm like, okay, so don't get on the highways because that's bad. Back roads were just as bad. So last night, it was definitely worse on both locations, highway or back roads. And then this morning, it was really just the back roads. The highways were fine. But mm-hmm. yeah, I uh, I switched up my routine a little bit. I gave myself plenty of time. But 
that was a that was a life lesson. Hmm. And I'm sure these people were watching from their cozy homes like this idiot uh, trying to get up the hill. <laughs> this morning, my snow blowing cigar was the Avo Thirtieth. Hmm. So you don't like it that much? What? Snow blowing cigar doesn't it get like wet and nasty and like. You, you, you yeah. usually want something a little tougher, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Avo thirtieth. I don't know if I've smoked that. Yeah, normally my go-to snow blowing cigar is the Umbagog. Yep. Oh, uh, so oh. I did, a warning okay. cigar, right? I didn't have any in the humidor. It was really oh, yeah. disappointing. Avo thirtieth. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've smoked that. I'll have to look into that. Um, also, wouldn't that? I don't know. Like, I get distracted smoking a cigar while I'm working inside downstairs. Wouldn't that like get hard? Like. I'm very talented. maneuvering the the toughest part. Ed, is to show her your fingers. <laughs> yeah, the toughest part is the smoke going in your eyes. That's, that's really what I, like if you're I holding it in that. your mouth. But otherwise, you can you know. It's See, like, I can't. I can't sit there like I do. Like this. Mm-hmm. Like all day long. You have to be able to do that. Although, I can't. With the snowblower, once you get the impeller go, uh, impeller going, if you then start moving it forward, you can let go. Oh. Yeah. On okay. one side and do Depen- any yeah. adjustments. So Depending on your snowblower, but right. most of them are going to be. I'll come yeah. to you guys when I have to buy a snowblower. Yeah. Because <laughs> my apartment does it for me right now. I, At three in the morning, in case I, you want to know right back. I like window. the Aaron's Professional Snowblowers. Aaron's Professional? Blew right through everything. No nice. issues. Okay. Right. Use the Good flame, job, Aaron. Flamethrowers. Yeah, you're welcome. You're great at it. Flamethrowers. <laughs> I saw. I like, I like that <laughs> you idea. You see some guys doing that. Just flamethrowers. Aaron I comes like through your house like hungry, hungry hippos and gets rid of <laughs> all the snow in your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we've got a big football weekend this weekend. Yeah, Super Bowl, which is going to be a weird one. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, it's, I think the stands are supposed to be filled with mostly <laughs> first responders. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and nurses. And nurses. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nurses. People on the front line, and yeah. which is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it'll be like a third capacity. And There's going to be about 25,000 people in a yeah. 77,000. Which, plus side, the halftime show won't have like a million fans, like quote unquote right. fans on the, sta- on the like field, which minutes. is always obnoxious. It's so weird. I It's so weird to me. And I guess if you stick with the first responders, most of them have been vaccinated. Yep. At this and point. tested for every frequently. That's kind <laughs> right. of the mentality. It yeah. also just as a treat. Yeah. Which, they deserve it. Yeah, every, absolutely. every, not just the 25,000, every. First responder deserves some extra love. Although yeah. my favorite thing is to find the time lapse of them setting up and tearing down oh, the yeah. halftime show. It's just yeah. amazing the precision they do. It's crazy. Work. Like that's some yeah. high and stakes it's gotta event be a little planning. Extra complicated if they're trying to keep people distanced or whatever right. other yeah. procedures they need. Yeah. But also it being a home game for the Buccaneers, which is insane. That's never happened. Yeah. I I think that gives just a little bit of an edge with the fans, I agree. possibly. But we'll see. Yeah, uh, and Tom Brady, you know, <laughs> the fans are kind of coming from all over the place. Like each yeah, NFL are they team are, they really are kind of in? shipping a couple of people That's that they. Okay. So it's not a true, and it's a Super Bowl. You never really have a home field anyway. It's true. Yeah, uh, it's all corporate sponsors. That's why right. it's impossible to get a ticket to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So e- even though, but th- they've been coming out and saying this is worse for them having it really? at home. Because now they have to deal with extra stuff. They have mm. to deal with all their home life stuff uh, on top of dealing with. Pre- Super I, I was Bowl thinking prep. that would make it easier. Like they're coming right from their house to like they normally would, you know. Mm. But no, no, because hmm. it, normally if they're out in like Houston or Phoenix, you don't you have just to deal, deal with, with the damn We need to give kids. them a call and yeah. ask yeah. them what exactly. it would be like. <laughs> there you go. Well, we should probably uh, talk about what exactly should be your celebratory smoke after the Super Bowl. Aloha. Today's top five is brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Choose from the mild white label, the medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavor blue label. Series Five Five has it all. Five Five equals the perfect 10, and that's what you get every time. The only thing better than a Five Five cigar is two of them, so you can share with a friend. And now, here's today's top five list. So, this is not official by any. But, you know, seeing that, I mean, most of us are from New England. We have a lot of experience with celebratory right. Super Bowl cigars. Wow. <laughs> Rub it in there. Rub it in. Yeah, really. We should have taken an audience What are you saying? Poll. The Cincinnati Bengals have never... Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Are your family Bengals here. fans? I really... I'm going to be honest. I really don't watch a whole lot of pro football. Aaron, I, but it Aaron. makes sense. Not you, Aaron. The other Aaron. Are you a Bengals fan? I don't know if he's listening. Mm-hmm. He's he texting is. me right now. No, he's, he's, he's listening. listening. That's not What's comment. up, yeah. Dad? Ben knows. Uh, well, we always, I mean, we always want to see the Browns or 
the Bengals do well. <laughs> okay. So we just kind of—it's just something I kind of keep tabs on. But Which I, is, you know, you disappointing. Know. I we were I was pretty proud of the Browns this season. That wasn't mm-hmm. that wasn't terrible. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, I really don't. I don't really. I put all my eggs in Ohio State. Yeah. So yeah. that's and Chiefs won last year. Was that or was yes. that the year before? That was last year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Mm. I mean, I'd, I'd have to root for the Buccaneers. Just, I mean, Tom Brady for one. Yeah, I'm not angry. But some with him people for are leaving. really salty about that. But also, like, you know, I want to see a team that hasn't won in a long time win. I'm always for the underdog. It's it is well, it is normally more fun when a team like that hasn't won for a very long time. They won in 2000. Yeah, so it's been or 2002. Years. Excuse me. I so was the whole generation years that old. Seen Shut up, cat. Sarah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, typically you'd want that team that hasn't won in a very long time for wing. Yeah. We as Red Sox fans who grew up in the area know, know all too well how that well, feels. And Patriots too before the 2000s. Agreed. It was awful. Yeah. So yeah, we know that feeling. So anyway, cigars. No, mm-hmm. I'm kidding. Um, we we kind of were talking before the show about what exactly you should smoke if, if you have a, a stake in this game. We understand a lot of people don't. But uh, to celebrate... Any After. big accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, really. Honestly, anything. These are all the lists that we kind of talked about. These are all really good cigars. And partly because of the name, but partly because of the quality. For number five, I think Perdomo Champagne mm-hmm. is a great celebratory Champagne. cigar. And I think that's one that you you can buy a box of and hand them out you know, yes. as a celebration. That's yeah. It's not going to break the bank. Nope. And it, and it feels like, you know, celebratory. It champagne, is. Champagne, you know. Pop some champagne, have a Perdomo Champagne. And it's also, it's not too strong. Yeah. So it, it is a great box. Busted out at a wedding. You know. Not too pricey compared with the rest of your no. list. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that's about as low as it's going to go. But these are celebration cigars. These are yeah. these are like wedding cigars. These are Super Bowl cigars. These are all good good cigars to to look at when it's time to celebrate. Um, so is that a solid number five? I think so. I think yeah. everyone. I like that it. Too. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Number four, Davidoff Royal Robusto. Ooh, pricey. It yeah. is. They're all going up from here. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. like. I mean, it's it's good. It's yeah. it's. I think more of it is the price that people would go to it for as a celebration. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it feels like you're smoking something high quality. It's not bad. You know. No, I like I like Davidoff. Um, I tend to like the darker stuff, like the the Winston Churchill Late Hour, is what I gravitate towards. But Aaron hates. Yeah, I hate that one. You do? I really do. Yeah. Really? I I really like the their traditional. Winston Churchill. Okay. Just the late hour just hits really? me the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've I, tried it many times going back, and every time I'm like, nope. That just really don't like surprises it. me, actually. Yeah. Really? I love that one. Yeah. I love it. Maybe it was because it was the naked episode when we first had it. <laughs> oh, so you're like scarred. Scarred so like by, but no, no. Like, oh, God. <laughs> the flavor just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. The naked yeah. episode. <laughs> casual, casual drop there. Um, but I thought that was a good number four. You know, mm-hmm. um, number three, and this is semi new, probably in the last. Two or three months, we got it downstairs. Um, the Byron Venecianos. Yeah, mm, phenomenal. I mean, a, a Byron is always going to be a celebration, yeah. you know. And it's a torpedo, so, you know, it, mm. it's a little more accessible to those who yeah. only gravitate towards I think torpedo. last Patriots when I smoked the Epic poem. Oh, that yeah. thing is so, I smoked that it's for big, Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. That lasted boy. me all night. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. So I don't think this one was available at that time. Mm, no. So I, I would go for that one. Venecianos. I think I'm saying it right. It's a long name. Mm. Yeah. So, but that one is delicious. It's excellent. Um, again, it's not. It's full flavored, but it's not full bodied by any sense yeah. of the word. I'd say it's medium. And that's a, a price point where you're like, you know, you're going to do it for a celebration yeah. for the most part, right? But also the flavor backs it up. Yeah. Number two, Atabe Diosis, mm. Churchill. Nice mm. long Atabay. Great one. Very approachable, like yep. from any palate, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the celebratory ones have to be big cigars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're not we're not factoring in the fact that there's 17 inches of snow on the ground. These are just yeah. cigars that you... <laughs> you right. wouldn't bust out a Lancero for a celebration. No. It's nope. just... Eh, nope. It doesn't feel like substantial. It's not. Yeah. You need you need something hefty. Um, so far, any any uh, objections uh, to They're the all good. All right, so we're down to number one. All right, the Padron 50th for the number one celebratory cigar. I think that's going to be the go-to for the most of the world. Like, Well, the country, I should say. Well, yeah. The world's going to uh, maybe go for a BDK that, or something. That was uh, Robert Kraft's choice after <laughs> yeah. one of the Super Bowls. You're handing out the 50-year-old cigars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Edelman do, but... <laughs> so that, that cigar's dynamite. I like that cigar a lot. Yeah. And it's, it is. It's recognizable. Everybody knows Padron. Yep. And it is, yeah. you know, a classy cigar. Although, although it does profile as one of the 
more full-bodied padrones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it is still available in their typical natural in Maduro. Um, but even the, the natural, I've is, smoked both. It's pretty dark. That, yeah. yeah, that natural it's, still. It's matter of degrees. I yeah. smoked that for breakfast one morning, and I couldn't Ooh. smoke the rest of the day. I was like, eh, and I'm out. That, yeah. was, that was enough. That's a hearty so, breakfast oh, smoke. Yeah. That was intense. Yeah, have that in a Guinness, and you don't have to eat for a week. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not a bad diet. I'm no. disappointed you guys didn't mention It's a Boys and It's a Girls. Yeah. But that's very specific. And it's, it's a celebration, is it not? It is. Yeah. They're, they're we'll put that in the honorable mention honorable category. Mention. Sure. If you're going to have a, a baby. A lot of those are machine made. I do. <laughs> but you still sell them. La sure. Gianna has a, it's a, it's right. a boy and it's a girl. Which are good. They're great. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a Churchill size. I mean, that's the whole origin of La Gianna. <laughs> yeah. It's a girl. It's, it's a girl. <laughs> it's yeah. a girl. Surprise. Gianna. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that, I guess if you specifically need to buy something for a baby reveal or whatever. That mm-hmm. would also be the perfect gender reveal. Like just wrap a box of cigars mm. and open it up. Bam. Now everybody gets a yeah. cigar. And, and that's also all... another occasion where you wouldn't necessarily break the bank because you're going right. to need that money usually. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> got a baby coming. You're and if you're going to gonna hand them out to people that aren't necessarily going to like it, you know, like cigars, then That's a nice light smoke. That's perfect yeah. for them. So there you go. There's your gender reveal idea <laughs> for 2021. Uh, so that is the official top five. Everyone agree with that? Sure. N- I'm okay sure. with it. Good list. Yeah. I thought so. I, I thought so. I think we better get delighted soon. I, yeah, I know? need some. I need to pick me up today, Ed. <laughs> Are you tired of the news claiming the end of the world? Yes. It goes something like this. Real wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Fire and brimstone coming down from the sky. Rivers and seas boiling. Forty years of darkness. Earthquakes, volcanoes. The dead rising from the grave. Human sacrifice. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Enough. I get the point. Well, it's time for some delightful news. Brought to you by Cuban Delight Cigars. All righty. Let's <laughs> see what we got going on doesn't start out too delightful with the continuation of the pandemic what pandemic <laughs> <laughs> the girl scouts of america is getting creative for cookie season besides safe in person sales the beloved cookies will be sold online for a second year and for the first time through food delivery service grubhub hmm. To kick off the partnership, Grubhub will be delivering cookies for free with a minimum purchase of $15 through February 14th. That would be Valentine's Day. The partnership is meant to give local Girl Scouts experience in entrepreneurship. Local troops will track and fulfill orders, manage inventory, and more, all using Grubhub's back-end technology. For online sales, customers can use the Cookie Finder to get connected to a local portal if they do not know any local troop members. (laughs) And that's just delightful. I mean... (laughs) One, with the legalization of marijuana in a lot of places, they're going to see a huge increase in... Uh, in cookie sales. In cookie sales, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you don't actually have to approach her. <laughs> yeah. so this get, is, get your thin mint stock yeah. now. This is not only delightful news. <laughs> this is a great Valentine's Day gift idea for any guy or girl listening, I guess. But I I do want to single out men because sometimes I think they forget. It's co- forget like what? Everybody, <laughs> I feel like everybody loves Girl, girl Scout cookies. Surprise her, him with the delivery of the cookies directly to the door. Like, right. that is awesome. That yeah, is awesome. Then you got to pick the right kind, and if you get you, that You have to wrong, do 15 or... anyway, so that's like two so that's or three, like three boxes. boxes. <laughs> yeah, that's like two or three boxes. Give them an assortment. I'd get them all wrong. Two Thin Mints, one Samoa. Yeah. That's your go-to? Yeah, yeah I what, think that's, that's what would be fair. What, And I, I do like the peanut butter filled. I or love, Caramel yeah. Delights. Peanut butter sandwich I love them all. I, I don't the think... The Tagalongs? Yeah. Those are gross. Yeah, no. Those are the, uh, the peanut ones. The I had the new. Uh, so. They have a new uh, toasties. They call it. I think it's like basically like a French toast kind of. Oh, it's that sounds they're amazing. pretty good. They oh. did try to make a gluten free one at one point. Oh, but it's just a, a they just send you a brick. Yeah. <laughs> Just gnaw on that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cat salt lick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. I just think it's a great idea. I will be downloading Grubhub to get so, my Girl Scout cookies. Even though they're thin, these Lanceros last pretty pretty well. Yeah, yeah. I thought construction's great. Yeah. 
I haven't had issues with my burn. I've seen you had to touch yours up a couple mm -hmm. times. I don't know how you're doing. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it was just kind of burning um, a little softer, I guess. But this is this is deal. great. This is this is burning great. I still like the flavor. I don't it hasn't really switched up that much no. for it's me. It's a very gradual change yeah. in flavor. Yeah. But it's Makes a flavor sense. I like. So um this is still I would say my favorite Lancero that I have mm. probably ever smoked. Hmm. So Good. but again, I haven't been able to smoke a whole lot because yeah. we don't have a whole <laughs> lot in the shop. So Ben, what do you think? Are you liking it? I know it's kinda Close to your wheelhouse, just a little longer. Um, yeah. For the most part, I really like this cigar. Um, and something that we never, ever talk about, and I don't think anyone actually really cares. I really like mm -hmm. the band. It is, yeah. <laughs> it is a very yeah. nice band. It's a really cool, interesting yeah. band. With kind of a lot going on. I, yeah. I know that's probably not for most people. Most people don't care. But I kind of like this one. It I, is, I like the color scheme yeah. better than the traditional tabernacle, too. And ben, are you going to identify who's on the band? It's some kind of Cossack. <laughs> no, no. I, I believe it's Haile Selassie on the band. Mm -hmm. Is it? History and major. The old president of Egypt? Yeah. Yep. The old president of Egypt. Uh, uh, Ethiopia. 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 Mm, something yeah. like that, yeah. Okay. That's on, Not mm -hmm. Egypt. Ethiopia. Crazy history stuff behind it <laughs> that Malolo was all into. That well, he was the yeah. president of Ethiopia in the early 20th century and one of the most influential leaders in Africa in the last 500 years, so I think it's fair. Put them on a cigar band. There you go. Why not? Why not? Why not? Ed, what would you uh, what would you rate? Ninety two. Wow, you didn't even have to think about that. No, <laughs> jeez, that was that was locked and loaded. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? I actually already had ninety two in my head. Did you huh? really? Um, Are you lying to me? No, because if it were the other uh, sizes, the other vitolas, yeah, it would be a ninety four. So it's, okay, it's a ninety two. Is okay. easy. Like it's a great right. cigar. I just wish it was a. Different size. <laughs> okay. Uh, why? Why do I? My name's Ben. I know. How many times have I done that? I, call, uh, I don't know why. I'm just so used to saying. It. I go 93. 93. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you you like it a little bit more. Yep. And um, I had 94 in my head. Mm -hmm. So um, plus 90 with an average of 92.75. Not that's bad. For I mean, that's very good for a Lancero. Yeah, I mean. for a Lancero, that's really high. But I feel like I depending on the publication, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, depending on the publication. But um, I really like this. I think if you haven't tried Lanceros and you don't mind something a little punchy, yeah. I think this is a great place to start. Um, Twelve ninety nine. I mean, it's not going to set you back. It's for the line. It's a little bit more expensive, but mm -hmm. for cigars in general, that's not. That's yeah, not. and it's a you get a good amount of time out of it too. Yeah. So it's not like you're what just are we? We're at forty two minutes. And yeah, or not even I'm halfway. Maybe. Not even halfway. Yeah, yeah I really thought this was gonna. I, I thought I remembered this burning faster, and maybe that's a mistake I made in the past of smoking it too mm. fast. But uh, I really thought that we'd be we'd be kicking it by the time uh, we got to the forty two minute mark. So, all right, that's a uh, ninety two point seven five for the Tabernacle Lancero, and that is also it for today, folks. Tune in next week as we smoke the new Bandolero, which mm -hmm. I am personally really excited about because mm -hmm. I've smoked about fifteen in the past few weeks. Uh, you know the drill. Post your Tabernacle Cigars to Facebook or Instagram. Tag us so we can see it or hashtag and hashtag the brand. Uh, if you have to keep a private page, personally message us and you'll be entered for that lighter giveaway. Until then, you have been listening to the Ash Holes broadcasting from the Jose Dominguez Cigar Studio above Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire. We'll see you next week. Opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.